family? This is the Playmaker Podcast, episode 31. I'm your host, Reggie Coleman. I'm Nikita Morrow Thomas. And we want to thank you guys for tuning in. And uh, to all our loyal listeners, we appreciate y'all for showing love all the for time, sure, every sure. week. To our new listeners, welcome. We hope you enjoy what you hear. And um, we're going to get started. So, Kita, what's okay. been going on okay. before we get into a, what we're talking lot, about? A lot's been going on. Okay, guys, I know I've been grinding, working. Mm-hmm. Had to take a break. We was going too hard. Sometimes, guys, you got to slow it down and then bring it back. So I done slowed it down. Uh, what did I do this weekend? Got caught up on some sleep. Um, That's good. You know, uh, did some family stuff. And um, basically just chilled and relaxed. Not as much as I should, but enough. What about you? Well, if y'all don't know, I'm about to let y'all know. October 22nd was my birthday, so if you ain't wish me a birth- happy birthday, you still can do it. Just say happy belated. Mm-hmm. But um, I celebrated my birthday. I was a little under the weather. Um, my girlfriend turn? got got me sick. You said what? How old did you turn? I turned 28. Okay. I'm 28 okay. years old. Um, See, we, we getting up in age. We? We, oh, we. Throw, that in, throw me in there. You older, but that's for another uh, episode. Um, so yeah, we celebrated... Saturday, we had some friends over, you know, had a good time, you know. Mm -hmm. I invited you. I know you had to work late, you know, tired. And then my actual birthday on Tuesday, we went to Delta's in New Brunswick. Good. Let me tell y'all something. If you go the week of or on your birthday, Mm -hmm. they give you a free meal, Mm. a free dessert. And if it's on a Tuesday, you get a free drink, but... Luckily, this 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 birthday was on a Tuesday, so I got a free drink, mm-hmm. free meal, free dessert. Mm. Are they checking IDs? They check your ID, like to make sure to oh, verify. Okay. I wasn't trying to, I wasn't trying to do no scam, and I was, I was, I was just asking for people that didn't know that never been to that <laughs> yeah, restaurant. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't asking people want to go there and just act like it's your birthday to get a free meal. <laughs> never, don't do that, guys. Do not go to restaurants. <laughs> Lying about I, know, I know some people who go to restaurants and they say it's their birthday. Most places don't check. They get a free dessert. All the time. I ain't gonna say no names, but you know? if you know, you know. Mm-hmm. Nah, it wasn't me. Oh, okay. It seemed like it was you. You never mm-hmm. tell a story. It's somebody real you. close, but I ain't gonna say their name, like I said. Is it you? you know. No, it's not me, seriously. It seemed like it was you. But yeah, that, that's how my weekend weekend went. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just enjoyed myself with family, friends, and that's how it went. Yeah, that's what birthday is about. Before we get into the, the, the nitty gritty, I just wanna give a shout out to um, my best friend, Jacqueline, her mother's birthday was today. So uh, happy birthday, Miss Fee in heaven. Also my cousin, uh, his birthday was today and, um, another he- heavenly birthday to him. He would have been 34 today. Also another birthday shout out to my aunt, Aunt Rochelle. Um, today is her birthday as well. So shout out to you, aunt. I hope you, my, my two, uh, people that's in heaven, I hope you guys continue to guide us, all of us, your family and your friends. And then my aunt, I hope you enjoy your day. Um, yep, just some birthday shout outs, you know, something like. Oh, yeah, no gifts though. No gifts. No, it's all good. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's get started. NBA season, uh, premiere week as they call it, first mm-hmm. week. Mm-hmm. Um, Tuesday, who played Pelicans and yep. Raptors, yep. and that game wasn't as hyped up as it was supposed to be because yeah, Zion was injured. But uh, the Raptors, they they showed up and showed out. Siakam had thirty two and 34. eight, thirty four and eighteen. Yeah. Van Fleet had 32. Van Fleet had 32. Uh, he in the starting lineup now. Um, wow. So, yeah, they was hooping. I was surprised mm-hmm. at them. So, let's talk about that game real quick first before we go into um, the, the, the heavy hitter. What I like about the Raptors is, yep, Kawhi left, but they not, it's not no, 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 they just won't move on. It's mm-hmm. no like, oh, we don't have Kawhi, let's just tank the season. They still have a lot of talented guys, and I'm telling you guys, look out. They're in the East, right? Oh yeah, yeah. They're, they could, they're gonna definitely still be in that. I in say that top five. Top five. I'm saying like three. Talent. I think First Siakam. I think Siakam. Um, he's a he's a really hard guard. Oh like, yeah. You don't. He's a he's a power forward. He's uber athletic. He, he is his motors on a hundred. The only thing I I think would be is the Raptors don't go deep mm-hmm. in their bench. So I think at some point those guys are gonna get worn out. I think when they go eight deep right now, it's, yeah. it's only been the first game, but I don't know how that bench needs to just get stretched a little bit more for me to have the confidence of them being maybe top three. With them just playing eight players, I'd probably say, like you said, five, top five, probably in the East. Mm. And then the Pelicans, without Zion, um, it's a young team, and I really like their coach. So I feel like they're going to do 
Um, they're gonna do okay. They're no. It's just gonna be tough for them. It's gonna be tough for them, especially because they're a young team. Um, you know, took these players that was on the Lakers. Now they, now they have to figure out what their roles gonna be mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So yeah, I, I think they'll be okay. But you'll see a lot of bumps in in, in the road for them. Yeah, I like. I watched both games, and I like the Raptors. Um, I like Siakam. He was very aggressive. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, you could see signs of that in the in the play, late playoffs and in the finals that he was going to be something to reckon with once you knew Ka Kawhi was uh, leaving because, sure. like, he was he was molding himself into being that superstar player for that team. Sure. Um, he was in foul trouble and still ended up with those crazy numbers. And like I said, Van Fleet, he's I think he's the X, X factor for them mm -hmm. um, because Siakam going to get his numbers. Lowry, he's going to have that 15, between 15, 17 points and between 8 this and 10 assists. Is this last year of his contract or did he be signed? He, got, he just signed one-year extensions. One-year extensions. Yeah, 34 okay. mil. We're not counting nobody's pockets up. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Um, so I think he's the X factor for them. And on the other side, the Pelicans, Zion out for like two months. Yeah. Um, Ingram is he has to be consistent and efficient mm -hmm. yeah. for them he to uh, excel yeah. um, Drew Holiday is going to be he going to do what he do yeah. um, and Lonzo is like I think he's their X factor he needs to not necessarily shoot better or shoot mm -hmm. more but yeah. just be confident on the court like yeah didn't they bench him for quarter yeah I was a little I didn't like that but you never know what goes on in, on the coaching staff's mind that's true. Um, so we'll see as the season uh, goes along how they play him in the fourth quarters of close games. Yep. Um, before that, he had 10 points, I think, seven assists. He was three for four from the free throw line. That's good for maybe him. Three or two, yeah. Yeah, so like, I don't, know, I'm not, I don't see why. Seen. Maybe it was something he's seen, as yeah. you said, or playing off of last year's Lonzo Ball and like, oh, they didn't play him in the fourth quarter, so maybe I should do that as well. Mm -hmm. I, I hope it's not that, but we shall see. But let's move on to the, the marquee game that was on Tuesday night. The Lakers and the Clippers. And this is the problem Go ahead. that Go your ahead. team's going to have. Y'all, y'all the superstar, LeBron, AD, glitz and glam, Clippers, dogs. All of them. For dogs. sure, for sure. That's the that's the I think the big yeah, the big difference of and then they need the Lakers need to accept this is a rivalry, like the Clippers were so hyped to beat them like the Lakers are like, I bet it's just one game, you know the Clippers was like bet this is the rivalry who's the best team in L A, you know, and they didn't even have PG. <sighs> yeah, the, I think it's getting a little bit overblown the hype though of is Kawhi better than LeBron is LeBron. I don't I don't, I don't even like talking about all that. But let's talk about Clippers Lakers. I was very disappointed. I ain't mm -hmm. gonna lie to you. Like <laughs> they started off so hot, the Lakers. I'm talking I about. Know, it was, I was like eleven I was two. I'm like, oh, the Pat. They started Pat Bev on LeBron. He was just posting up, scoring. I'm like, oh, this what they doing? Then Clippers brought in Lou Will. Brought in uh, Montrez Harrell, mm -hmm. the bench assassins. Yep. And the game changed then, ever since then. Wow. Like, it's crazy how the Lakers, mm -hmm. the past three years, I've been watching them because, yeah, past three years. Mm -hmm. They can't stop Lou Will. Well, nobody can stop Lou Will, but they can't do anything with him, mm -hmm. no matter who on the team. Like, mm -hmm. He's going to get to the free throw line. He's going to score when he wants to score. Yep. It was just terrible. And I was disappointed. <laughs> I was disappointed in the Lakers. I was disappointed in LeBron because I don't think he was aggressive enough. Mm -hmm. um, I was impressed by Danny Green. He was out there hooping. But I said that, I think, in one of the episodes, like, he's going to be the, the one that's going to enjoy playing with LeBron the most. Who, Danny Green? Yeah, any shooter. I'm talking like a legit shooter. That's your main job. Because that's Danny Green's main job. Kyle Corver's autumn. That's their main job. Mm -hmm. Who wouldn't want to play with somebody that draws that much attention to himself? And is he's gonna pass? That's just the number one thing he likes to do. Yeah, LeBron doesn't have that. He's a great player. Don't get me wrong. And his numbers is gonna pass Jordan. We all know that. Yeah, but the difference, sure. I think, the biggest difference people have when they compare him to Jordan or they would compare him to Kobe is that mm, that edge. That I know I'm the best player. Like we know you're the best player. But you got that, that dog. That dog in him. That's, That's what Stephen Jackson said. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. My bad. My bad. Yeah, that dog in him. Like mm -hmm. 
take this rivalry on. Lakers been the best team in the past, but now the Clippers, like, we, we, we're on now. So it's like, all right, who's going to be the best team in LA? Take that challenge on. And, and I feel like the Lakers, just the game one. You just see. It's game one. Yeah, it's, not, it's nothing too. And, my bad for cutting, you know, cutting you off, but, um, Lakers got basically a whole new team mm -hmm. and a whole new coaching staff, which means new offense, new defensive schemes. Correct. Whereas Clippers, they just they add uh, Kawhi. Kawhi and mm -hmm. a couple other pieces. Mm -hmm. um, same offense, same defense, same coaching staff besides Tyron Lue, but he just gets plugged in. So it's like it's different scenarios and what you can look at and why – Things happen and why they didn't happen and why things went well and why they didn't. Correct. So it's it's you can go different angles with it, but in a nutshell, the Lakers disappointing. Yeah, they disappointed a lot of the world. But it's game one. You move on. You mm -hmm. learn each other. You learn your teammates. Your, mm -hmm. your coaches. Your rotations. All that yep, stuff. For sure. So we're gonna see. Talk to me at game twenty, mm -hmm. and then we can really we have a small sample size of. What it looks like. You feel right. like Kuzma yeah. probably be back by then. It's a lot. It's yeah, a lot. Yeah, for it's sure. A lot. For sure. It's a lot. Yeah. I, the NBA, it, I don't watch it a lot in mm. the rec, in the regular season. It's simply the fact that the games come on too late. Now that my work schedule changed, I'm able to watch a lot more of the games, which is cool because we talk about it on the podcast. So I'm like, bet. I'll be able to watch more and engage more in the conversation when we talk about it. But the regular season is just like low key. I wish I could press fast forward and like what. Well, I'm, I'm excited for this season in particular because. You know, the Warriors ain't the Warriors I know. Of, that we know. They just got smacked I like by the Clippers. <laughs> no, I like it. What about the Rockets, real quick? Huh? Your team, the Rockets. No, no, no. I think you guys got uh, didn't understand my words when I was talking on mm. the last podcast. I said I was a Rockets fan. What was your words? I said that I'm a, um, I'm a, I might be a Rockets fan, but I need to um, look at my, my, uh, my stuff to make sure that I'm capable of being a Rockets fan because I don't know, you know, I don't want to be a bandwagon. So I'm just going to take this another year off of no team. He was up 15. Mm. Then Giannis came in. He had about 25, 20, something, 20 something in the second half. I'm like, oh boy. I'm going to be. Triple dub. Yeah, I'm going to be honest with you, Reds. The Harden and um, Westbrook. And Westbrook. You don't see it? Unless you just play one, one play without the other. Well, point? that's that's basically what they do. When they yeah. on the court, somebody got the ball, the other one Just basically a half court, which yeah. was what they did last year with Chris Paul and James Harden. Well, James Harden did that when Chris Paul had the ball. Like he was just stand. He he don't move off the ball. Like it's no off the ball. But I'm movement. saying like when Westbrook, like Westbrook, he didn't average a triple double these last three years. He's a willing passer. Yeah. So why not? You see him driving to the basket. Why not just? As basketball players, okay. Let's move see. to the open spot. I'm move to the Cut. open spot. Cut. Mm -mm. Like, nope. Mm -mm. I'm going to just stand here and just so watch you dribble. This so is why he, he will always be a great regular season player. They'll be a great regular season team. But once playoffs come, it's a different story. It's a different game. They yeah. referee different. They are, it's yeah. different. When you're that stagnant, you're not going to be able to beat no one, no one of top tier. You maybe could beat someone. Say if they did, whatever seed they are, they, you may get out the first round. Yeah, but, but just depending on what, whatever matchup that other team have, because you may could get bumped in the first round because you just playing like the game slows down in the playoffs. I don't know if people know that you watch when you're watching the game is exciting, but it's not as fast as it is in a regular season. And then you can play this team a couple times in the playoffs, or you can play them in the regular season. Okay, bet we then got a, a, comf a comfortability of what this team is good at, what they're not good at. All right, bet we could beat them on the boards, or but in the playoffs. They done might cleaned all that up. So as stuff you was beating them in the regular season, you maybe not be the same. So the Rockets are not talented enough, in my opinion, to, okay, bet we're going to be this one-on-one -on -one ISO team. But when we get to the playoffs, now we're going to pass to the open player. Like, it don't work like that. You can't just turn it on and turn it off. Westbrook, I mean, Hart is going to dribble, 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 floater, one hand, leg thing, and all that. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I like James Harden. I'm not a big fan of the dribble dribble. It, it gets oh, it gets annoying after a while. But he's really talented offensive player. You can't take that away from him. Right. But he will never win a championship playing like that. Even a great city, Kobe. A, num a number of them guys have said it. It'll get you into the playoffs, but you will not win a championship playing that way. It just won't happen. So one more basketball thing I want to talk about before we jump to something else. 
Kyrie Irving, 50 points mm -hmm. in his debut. Mr. Game winner. Mr. Game winner. Mm -hmm. What you think about him in Brooklyn? Hmm. I like it. Anybody would like to send a Playmaker podcast two tickets, four tickets to the game. <laughs> four. Four. Um, yeah, I like it. I love it. Um, he seems very happy there. Um it's Kyrie. Like he he's he's very talented. Like, is the system fits him? We got a good group of players around him. Um, I definitely want to see how the season goes along because is it something that he has to do at a consistent basis? This is basically the same Kyrie we've known since he was with, with the Cavs before LeBron came back, et cetera, et cetera. He can score. We know that. But the evolution in Kyrie's game is can he get others involved and make other players better? And it's always been a knock on Kyrie. So I think him going to the Nets, this is what he wants to prove, that he can make other players around him better. And I feel like he can do that. Unfortunately, the Nets have to rely on him scoring a lot of points. Just some games is just gonna have to be fifty. Some games maybe somebody else will step up. I don't really know their roster like that, because all they talk about is Kyrie. But I don't know if anybody else can maybe score twenty points. Maybe get that load off of him a little bit more. Fifteen. Oh yeah. Because that's a lot when you get to the playoffs. If Kyrie has to average more than I say, if he has to average more than twenty-seven points, meaning he's gonna play a lot of minutes. You know, it's just gonna be a lot of wear and tear on his body. By the time they even get to the playoffs, if they make the playoffs. He's going to be a little bit worn down at that point, you know. So, it's just all time to see how the team gels. But his performance was, first of all, Kyrie handles are disgusting. And as yeah. a player that loves defense, I'm going to keep it a buck 50 with you guys. I'm not going to even play and try to guard. <laughs> I'm going to just give him a handshake and say, you got it. Like, I never, I'm really not a person that backed down. But he looked like, he, he was like, you could tear your ACL mess around with him. He just like, and it's just effortless. Like, Listen, the that last move, the last play of the game he lost, kind of lost his footing, but still looked like he did a move. Yep. And it was crazy. He got a great shot off. He just mm -hmm. missed it. Yep. But um, just to go along with you were saying, I think he's an MVP candidate if they have a like if they win enough because yeah. he's going to have the numbers. Yeah. He's going to have to score more than usual because usually he has that one other person. It was LeBron um, or K Love. Mm -hmm. Next year he'll have KD. So eventually he will have that. But this year I think he's going to put on a show. For New York and Brooklyn, um, but he does have Karis LeVert, who's I think this is his second year, maybe third. Um, Spencer Dinwiddie, so he has some players who can score. Those two in particular, they can score okay. fifteen plus. Okay. So, but, so they just have to be consistent with it. Okay. Um, if they are, I think they're top five in the East. Okay. I got the Sixers. I mean, I got the Bucks one. Sixers a close two. Mm -hmm. Um, who else? I want to say Boston, but I don't know. I don't know. I didn't like it. I didn't um, like it. <laughs> I didn't like who it. Who am I missing in the East? Um, yeah. Boston. Then it's, it's just go, it's, it's Bucks. Sixers and then whoever else. Sixers. It's, then, it's yeah, gonna, yeah. It's just going to teeter-totter whoever yeah. else is in the East. So the East is, is a two-team two race, to be honest, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, the Western Conference loaded, so we'll see. We'll talk about that more um, yeah, when that time comes. Them, so then, my boys, we ain't got to talk. We ain't got to talk about football. not right now. So, um, America's team, hmm? America's team kicked on the Eagles last week. What team did they play? The Eagles. Is like America's team, from? Cowboys. Oh, are you talking about the Philadelphia Eagles? The Cowboys beat. No, that wasn't the Eagles. The Philadelphia Eagles. Y'all played somebody Eagles. else. Y'all played a high school team. That wasn't the Philadelphia I was, Eagles. I was looking at the screen like, just smiling. Why was you smiling for? It was a great game. We let y'all win because y'all was You let us win? Mm-hmm. All right. Because, like, you had typical. to figure... Typical. You're typical. <laughs> You're typical. My team played horrible. Um, I felt like the disappointed mother uh, sent her son to play and then get embarrassed. I, I just it was just disgusted from the beginning when we fumbled. Oh, I'm sorry. You saying something? Man. I was just disappointed in my team. That's all I was saying, Reggie. That's it. That's all I was saying. Shout out to them boys. Who them boys? The Dallas Cowboys. I won, I won beat, me a couple dollars betting with some fans. Y'all beaten, beaten my team the last, the last four years. Mm -hmm. Yes, I get that. Okay. Y'all won the bowl, Super Bowl. That's cool. One of, one of our former players, Orlando Scandrick, was just going on a rant today. On a, we dropped him. He was on one of them. That's why I think he was doing he was a, it. He's a former player. On he said y'all still on the Super Bowl high. But we can talk about that more as we go along. Haters going to hate, sir. Every day. 
Don't come, don't be on our team and then and then we drop you because we want to get something else and then now bash us. We still on the Super Bowl high. No, we're not. We're we're not. It's, we're not good. Okay. We to we gonna leave it at that. They're okay. not good. <laughs> so guys, we're gonna take a break real quick, and after the break, we're gonna have a special guest, uh, my girlfriend Leah Hall Hanson. We're gonna talk about budgeting, relationships, and anything else that we want to. So catch us after the break. All right, maybe I should put this on the chart. Guys, <laughs> we're back. <laughs> we have the beautiful, multi-talented mm. <laughs> Queen Liz here, guys. Hey, everybody. How you guys doing? I think they're doing well. You know, it's been a, a long time coming. <laughs> Leah, my girlfriend, as I said before, the break. Um, she's been wanting to join for a long time, and I, I've been waiting for the right opportunity um, just to bring her on. So I think this is the right time, the right space, the right opportunity. So let's okay, get, let's get it started. Okay, preacher, why you right now? <laughs> right? That's just how you feel? If y'all see my dog, don't worry about it. <laughs> let's get it. So what, are we what do you want to talk about, Reggie? So I, let's talk about budgeting since we, we, we're not good with our funds. No, I'm getting better though. I'm well, getting we are. better. We aren't. We aren't. As, as good as Leah. As good as Leah. No, no, so, no. She the boss. She she got it. So what's some things you can talk about budgeting and some I guess pointers you can give pe the people, the listeners, us about mm -hmm. how to spend money, how to save money, and things like that. I guess. Um. So I think the biggest thing is just discipline, right? Oh, just like goodness. anything else. <laughs> You got to make your budget and you got to stick to it. Because what good is anything oh, no. if you're not day-to-day -day going through it okay, and doing what you're supposed to be that. doing? To um, budget. I think researching your finances, understanding what your student loans look like. Because majority of people have them. To look at the student loans I know, but you got to. Okay. It's depressing. Okay. But hopefully that once you get that budget, you get going with it. It just okay. becomes a little bit easier. So look at the student loans. Because you might be paying crazy interest where you can consolidate those interest loans, the mm. interest on the loans. Okay. Um, or you can just find a better way to pay them off and then mm. at a quicker rate. So understanding your loans and then just understanding your debt. Like what's your credit card debt looks like if you have it. Mm. If you're in debt because you just purchased a new car or just understanding your finances overall. Um, so yeah, that's what I did personally. And I did a lot of research for a lot of years, and I was able to pay off my student loan debt, 40000 in like four or five years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Paid hey, Google. <laughs> she paid them. Okay. That's fine. So you're saying, so just so basically, you just saying hold, hold yourself accountable. You got to hold yourself. You got to know what debt you have okay. and what it consists of, but then okay. you got to hold yourself accountable once you figure that out, come up with a budget. Um, and a simple spreadsheet on Google Docs. That's what I use. That's what I share with everybody. Okay. Um, when people ask me about budgets and Reg uses it, Mel and Ashley use it, some of my relatives use it. Like a so lot of people. So you paid off your student loan debt. Yes. How did well, that feel? now I'm in graduate school, so I got that debt. But I mean, it felt great until it came back really quick. But um, but yeah, no, it felt great. It felt like wow. a huge weight was lifted off my shoulders. So I was literally, I had no debt, I had no car payment. I had no student loan payment. I my check was my check. Mm. Wow. So I want that feeling again. Wow. That's that's amazing to yeah. even think that you can get to a point where you can pay your student loan debt off. I think a lot of people nowadays, especially on all, all of our age brackets, mm -hmm. we just say, "All right, the student loan debt gonna be there," but you don't right. really want it to be there because it stops you from doing a lot of things you want to do in the For future, sure. like buying a home or stuff like that, or maybe if you want to. I think we gotta get out the mentality though. A lot of people say that like, "Oh, it's gonna be there." Oh, you have ten years, like. But why, why settle for that when you don't have to? That's you true. just manage your money properly. Imagine when you're buying these twenty, thirty thousand dollar cars that could potentially have been in five years. You're usually paying off your car payment. Um, yeah. That could have been twenty, thirty towards your student loan debt in addition to what you're already paying on it. You That's know what I mean? So that could have been paid off in a couple of years if you manage your your money and just honestly stay in your lane. You gotta, mm, you gotta, stay in your lane. You gotta stay in your no lane. big ball brand. Sorry. No, you gotta know what you can afford. You can't mm. keep up with the Joneses. You gotta, you gotta be comfortable with yourself to be like, you know what, I can't do that, mm. right? But obviously, there's certain sacrifices you gotta make. That's true. Um, mm. when, when, piggyback off when you said talking about buying a car. 
should you personally like look at your finances and see maybe you can't afford a car right now and try to like what if you do need a car but then you if you get a car no mm -hmm. it'll put you in like a, a different type of like maybe you have to work more hours it just puts you in like a space where it's just like maybe be overwhelming so usually the rule of thumb is if you can't pay the car from three years it's out of your budget right okay. so if you're if you're looking for a car depending on what your income is and income to debt ratio mm -hmm. if you can't pay it off in three years then you're buying a car that you literally can't afford okay. um but i think the biggest thing is yeah understanding if you don't have a means of transportation you need it immediately like then again you have to just understand what your what your your limits are in mm -hmm. regards to pricing but then Try to stay around a, a budget that's manageable for you right. know what you what you, you can afford. Into your budget, yeah. yeah, so that's that's the main reason why I don't have a car right now is because I'm like, all right, I, the amount of money I make, I really would love to go to the Honda dealership and get the car that I want. Right, I love the car. I see it a lot, but I know that I'm putting myself into a, a, a real sticky situation with the payments and just put myself in like longevity of like all right that i don't know if i can afford this car going right. forward you know what i'm saying so it's just like and that's the sacrifice and you think about a car it the point of it is honestly to get you to point a to point b Correct. if it's beautiful and inside i love the seats heated mm -hmm. everything the whole nine yards yeah that's great but at the end of the day it's getting you from one place to another how Correct. much are you willing to invest in that when you got other things that are a priority over it that's true that's so true. i mean yeah it's just Knowing what you can afford, understanding that you don't have to keep up with what you see um, others doing on social media or mm -hmm. even around you. If they can afford it, that's great. You praise them for it. You give them a pat on the back. You encourage them to continue. Um, but if it's not for you, it's not for you in that moment. Hopefully one day you can get to that point and, yeah. and be that person um, having all these nice flashy things. Yeah, because what I'm learning right now about my finances, I'm following, I don't know if you guys know who Dave Ramsey is, but I'm following mm -hmm. kind of like his blueprint. You can like mix it up how you want to. Mm -hmm. But first he wants you to save money for an emergency fund. I just recently did that. Have you heard of the snowball effect? Yeah, so that's what I'm doing now. That's huge. But it's, it's, that's it's, how I was able to pay but off it's, all it's not, it don't. It's like when I look at the snowball, when I put my lease <laughs> debt down, uh -huh. the paper is here and then it's down. Like, <laughs> so you're like cool. oh man, this is like more than a snowball. Like, this is like a, <laughs> It doesn't, I don't know, I'm trying to figure out ways to make it, like, fun that I'm I'm conquering it. I'm paying off, I done paid off three credit cards in, like, the last month and a half. So, that's good. So, I'm working, but it's like, once the credit cards is done, it's all student loans from there, and I'm like. I mean, yeah, I feel like, because you've had those small victories where you've been able to pay off credit cards. Yeah. You understand your student loans isn't going to be a small victory. It's not going to happen in a month and a half, yes. two months, yeah. but, um. Yeah, I mean, you just got to stay encouraged that eventually, It'll get you can that check point. that off, too. Yeah. But then and you gotta think. Once I don't have those credit card payments, then the money that I have, then I've been making over. bigger payments to the student loan debt. But yeah, I'm the type of person like. No, and the I way don't. I started off with my student loans, though, I know mm -hmm. they say smallest to to largest, but mm -hmm. even with student loans, I started off with my smallest interest rates rates first, mm -hmm. and then went to my largest interest rates. And it okay. just so happened. Only reason why I did that is because my largest interest rates mm -hmm. were my biggest loans. So I was like, okay, this one is only three percent. And it's only for two thousand dollars, and like you said, I wanted to feel accomplished, so it's like I'd rather pay that off than work on this ten thousand dollar one. Yeah, that I know is going to take me forever or yeah. longer at least. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So I mean, I think that's yeah, that's just it. And interest, that's that's the killer. I think the student loan crisis is just it just puts you in a place where it's like you won't think you'll ever get out. Yeah, but you was able to stick to a plan, and like you said, you did research, you understood your finances, and you. You sacrificed a lot to right. put yourself in that position to get out of debt and have that moment that you was like, wow, this is what it's like to be debt free. And like, how did that really feel? I know you're in, in school now, mm -hmm. but how did it feel like to be like, you don't I mean, really owe nice. anybody? Yeah, right? I didn't owe anybody anything. I got my paycheck. I did what I wanted with it. Um, obviously, I still try to keep that mindset because I wasn't going out buying six hundred dollars shoes or anything okay. crazy, yeah, right? Yeah. But my biggest thing was okay now. I'm saving so I can prepare for the future, so I can go on trips that I want at the drop of a dime, and I don't have to think about, oh, I gotta wait till this pay pay for flight and then that. Like, no, I, I like to be able to book stuff, do stuff on on my own time, and not right. have to worry about that. So, that was huge. Mm -hmm. Well, I ain't say much, and you know, <laughs> Kita said, ask all the questions we wanted to, to hear the answers from. Um, so before we go, I know you gotta leave soon. You out, you going on a date with a friend? Ain't me. So, 
But um, he's made a <laughs> hater. Out of let's talk about power real quick. What y'all think about power? From Shit. finances to power. Yes. That's how you feel. Yes. 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 Escalated. Because I wanted to talk about relationship, but we don't have enough time for that. So we'll bring her back on. Yeah, we'll bring Lee back because the advice we, she gave about finances. <laughs> I'm probably going to just. I love when we talked about mm. sports. <laughs> we're probably just gonna fast forward the Leah part and just listen to that part again because okay. I know a lot of people want to know, like, dang, how does it feel to be debt free? Right. Did it? Did it in the amount of time? And, like, a lot of people don't do it in. Like, so let's know. not even talk about power. Let's just talk about. <laughs> let's just end it on that. Like, this is escalated. You know, we appreciate Leah for coming and talking about budgeting and finances. I know I, she's helped me a lot. Um, I, I'm gonna just leave that at that. <laughs> Um, Kita, I, I saw you taking some yeah, some, man. some artificial Lay the goat, down. man. Lay the goat. To pay some student, y'all don't understand how hard it is to pay student loans off and how hard it is to hope, like be like, all right, babe, I'm gonna stick to this budget. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna get tempted by nothing. Like it's still hard to this day. I'm still learning, trying to figure it out. But it's definitely dope that she is able to trust the grind. Life. Trust the grind. Yeah, yes. trust first. Ooh, trust, trust the, the process. process. No Sixers, though. We like Lakers over here. So she like the Lakers too, or, you, or are you forcing the Lakers on her? Just she don't have a basketball team. Yeah, yeah, I don't really have a basketball team, but I'm, I'm a hometown girl. You know, yeah. the Eagles. Eagles. So yeah, you got Eagles. The Sixers. Sixers. Yeah. Cowboys. Because yeah. that's a lie. You know. You know, y'all lost. Yeah, y'all lost. So. And y'all lost to the Jets, so it's okay. So it's been even. We lost. We beat the Jets. Y'all lost to the Jets. Yeah. So we basically beat y'all. Yep. Next time. Next time. Well, guys, this is episode 31. <laughs> we appreciate Leah's, Leah for joining us uh, briefly to talk about budgeting, finances. Shout out to my dog, Ace, if y'all see him. Yeah, this is my dog. He's going to be here. Uh, I'm your host, Reggie Coleman. Nikita Thomas. This is episode 31. See y'all next week. Peace. What's up, family? Thank you guys for tuning in and the continued support. We also want to thank Leah for speaking with us and sharing her knowledge on budgeting. For all of our content, visit our website at www.theplaymakerpodcast.com and follow us on Instagram at The Playmaker Podcast, Twitter at The Playmaker Pod, and on Facebook, The Playmaker Podcast. Until next time, peace.